Happy New Year, Bethel family. So good to be together with you virtually again today. You are in for a treat with the service today as we kick off a brand new series we're calling My Wish for 2021, where each of the teaching pastors is going to share their wish for us as a church family in this new year. So I get to kick it off today, and um, it's going to be a fun series. And so if you haven't already shared this service or invited others to join you virtually as you watch right now, please do so right now and give others an opportunity um, to join in what God's doing here at Bethel. And then one class that we have coming up, Financial Peace University kicks off the 19th of January. It's a great class to help all of us learn how to live within our financial means, how to cut debt in our lives, how to really do good stuff financially with the money we have. And it's just a wonderful opportunity to learn and grow in that area. And so if you want to sign up, details are all on our social media, our website, and you could sign up that way. Take advantage of it. Space is limited for that class. And so sign up for it. Take advantage of it. It's a good one. So as we get started today, let me pray, and we're going to get into worship. So enjoy the service. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the new year. Thank you for the opportunity you give us, Lord, for a fresh start, Lord. And so thank you that we can be together right now. We ask you to bless the worship, bless the teaching, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy the service. Higher, come on. 
Hi, Bethel. Like so many of you, I watched in horror the events of Wednesday in Washington, D.C. Those events struck so many of us deeply, not just as an isolated event of lawlessness, but because the events of Wednesday tied into a bigger discussion we've been having as a nation and as a church about race, justice, and how law enforcement treats different races differently. Wednesday's event reminded all of us that we have much work to do as a nation in healing our deep scars. And this work of healing becomes increasingly challenging as we get more and more divided as a nation. Wednesday was hard for so many, and for that, as your pastor, I'm genuinely sorry. I want to remind you that God is still in control and that he asks us, his people, to love each other, to love our neighbors, and to choose to be unified in Jesus Christ. When George Floyd's life was taken last May, our nation started an honest discussion about race and injustice, and we were part of that discussion as a church. That's when I encouraged all of us to reach across racial lines here at Bethel and to listen to others as they shared their own experiences in all of this. Again, I want to thank the 40-some of you who trusted me enough as your pastor to talk openly and honestly about your story, your hopes, your hurts. I'm thankful you trusted me enough to be honest about your disappointments and to tell me your hopes for us as a church. As a result of those discussions, God's been doing something in me that I never saw coming, and, and I spoke about this in more detail at the end of 2020. For years now, you've heard me say that Bethel is a place where everyone is invited to experience God's best. Everyone. As a result of those discussions this past year, God's shown me that we not only have to be a church that welcomes everyone, we have to create a church where everyone has an equal voice, an equal opportunity to lead, and an equal opportunity to shape our future as a church. And I want you to know that that's what the pastors and the leadership of Bethel are committed to. So as we continue to face uncertain days ahead as a nation, we can rest in the fact that God is in control and that his plan for us is good. It's to give us a future with a hope. So let's love each other. Let's empathize with each other. Let's be unified with each other. Let's keep listening to each other. Let's be the one place in this region where all people, white, black, brown, everyone, choose to love each other and be unified under Jesus Christ. Because as we do this, God will use our unity as a magnet to bring the lost to Jesus. That's how we'll grow to be a church of 5,000. And that's how we will make this region the most difficult place to die and go to hell from. I love you, and I'm so grateful for the beautiful, diverse church that we are. Being diverse is hard. Let's be honest about it. That's why there are so few truly diverse churches. But Bethel's special because God's building something unique here, and our best days are still ahead. And remember, our calling as a church is not to change Washington, D.C. It's to change the world. And we'll do that as we choose to love each other and to be unified in Jesus Christ. So thanks for being part of this beautiful work that God is building at Bethel. Let's pray. Father, this past week was hard on so many different levels. We pray that you heal us as a nation Help us to deal openly and honestly with our past, with our scars, with the stuff that gets in the way today. I pray for us as a church, Lord, the special church you're building at Bethel. Don't let the enemy come in and divide. Don't let the enemy come in and separate us. But may we keep leaning in to our differences. May we keep leaning in to each other and listening and loving and empathizing, not arguing, not separating. But Lord, may we love each other, may we choose unity, and as we do that, God, you will use this special church to bring the lost to you, Lord. That's what you promised to do, and that's what we're counting on you to do, God. Help us, please, heal our nation. Please, we pray this in Jesus' name.
Amen. Hello, Bethel family. It is so good to be with you. Happy New Year to all of you. It is my privilege today to kick off a brand new teaching series. Over the next several weeks, you're going to be hearing from each of the teaching pastors, and we will each be sharing with you our wish for you for 2021. And so today, as I get to kick this series off, my wish for all of us in 2021 is that we suffer well. Sounds like a downer, doesn't it? Like, Pastor Rob, what do you you mean? Your wish for me is that I suffer well in 2021. Well, if last year taught us anything, it's that there is suffering all around us. We experienced suffering collectively in a way that I've never seen before in all of my time here at Bethel. So many of us experienced suffering, great suffering, on multiple levels. And through all of that, God had just sort of been chipping away at at my thinking, and I just spent a lot of time thinking and praying about suffering. And through that, God just started giving me the ability to begin to understand what he's doing in suffering better. And and that's what I want to share with you. So I'm going to share four ideas with you about suffering that really God taught me as a result of all that we've been going through this past year or so. So first of all, How do we suffer well? First, expect suffering. Expect suffering. Jesus is teaching in John 16, and he says this, and he's speaking to his disciples, and Jesus says, the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when you will be scattered. Each one will go his own way. See, Jesus was telling the disciples that soon they would be scattered, The persecution would begin, his crucifixion, his mock trial, all of that would begin, and as a result, they would scatter. They would all go their own way, and they would begin to experience suffering that they haven't seen before. It sounds a lot like us in 2020, doesn't it? When he says, you will be scattered, each one will go his own way. It sounds like what happened to us in 2020. We were scattered, we've been separated, and Jesus is saying, suffering's coming. And then he goes on and he says, I've told you this so you may know, I'm sorry, I've told you this so you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Jesus says, I'm telling you this. I'm telling you that suffering is coming. Why? So you may have peace in me. See, notice what Jesus is saying. He says, here on earth, You will have many trials and sorrows. You will have many trials. You will have many sorrows. Jesus says, expect it. It's part of the broken world we live in. It's part of the broken, you know, systems that we occupy this planet with. We are imperfect people. The governments that we have are imperfect. The justice system that we have is imperfect. All around us, we see brokenness. We see injustice. It's brokenness. We suffer as a result. And then on top of that, you have disease. You have illness. You have the COVID. You have all of this stuff. And you can look around, and Jesus is saying, hey, expect suffering. It's there. It's all over. But Jesus says, I'm telling you to expect suffering, and lots of it, not to freak you out, not to discourage you, but Jesus says, I've told you this so you may have peace in me. We will not find peace apart from Jesus Christ. It's that simple. And can I tell you something? We've learned that from 2020, haven't we? All the stuff in life, friends, family, jobs, security, all this stuff, that we thought was so good that we got our identity from, we got our security from, when you take all of that away and you realize that doesn't give you peace. Jesus is saying, suffering's real. It's going to be there. It's part of the world we live in. Real peace, Jesus says, is in him. Then he says, take heart, because I have overcome the world. See, Jesus isn't just telling us, hey, suffering's coming so that we get freaked out by it. Jesus is saying, expect suffering, lots of it, 
but you'll find peace in me, Jesus says. And then he says, take heart, be confident, be bold, Jesus says. That's what he means by take heart. So he says, in in the middle of all the suffering, in the middle of all the injustice that we see, take heart. Be bold, Jesus says. Why? Because Jesus has overcome or conquered this current corrupt system that we live in, that we call our world. Jesus has overcome it. So we don't have to be hopeless when we see the suffering. We don't have to be hopeless when we see the injustice or the disease or the illness. We don't have to be hopeless We can experience true peace in Jesus. Why? Because he has conquered or overcome the world. So how do I suffer well in 2021? First, I expect suffering. Second, don't be surprised by suffering. Real similar to number one, expect it and don't be surprised by it. And for this, we go to 1 Peter chapter 4 where the Bible says, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through as if something strange were happening to you. Did you you catch that? Don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through as if something strange were happening to you. Why do we continue to be caught off guard? Why are we surprised by suffering, by trials? The Bible is saying, expect it. Don't be caught off guard by it. See, it's abnormal when we go through life and don't suffer. That's what the Bible is teaching. And so 1 Peter is saying, don't be surprised by the fiery trials, the hard stuff that you're going through as if something strange were happening to you. Jesus wants us to be ready. Jesus wants us to know this is what life on earth is like. It's hard. Listen, are there blessings? Yes. Are there times of peace and tranquility? Yes, there are. But Jesus is saying, the Bible is saying to us, listen, people, the world we're part of is broken. It's a hard place. It includes suffering. It includes hardship. It includes heartache. Be ready for it. Don't be caught off guard. Don't be surprised by it. And then 1 Peter goes on. Instead, instead of being caught off guard, instead of being surprised, the Bible says, instead, be very glad. Be very glad. Literally be full of joy. For these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you'll have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it's revealed to the world. Listen, I wish I had the time to unpack this verse. There's so much here. See, there are so many parts of the Bible that you hear me talk about and you hear me teach about. And and I say to you, so much of the Bible is so simple. We can read it. We can understand it. We know exactly what God wants us to do and and know. We can do that with so much of the Bible. And then there are parts of the Bible that are so deep, that are mysterious, and this is one of them. And as you read through the New Testament, you see this thread of suffering throughout the entire New Testament. And at times you see the Bible teaching us that there's this mystery that the Bible doesn't tell us much about, other than when we suffer and we suffer well, we honor God in the middle of our suffering. There's a connection between our suffering and the suffering Jesus went through. See, Jesus suffered tremendously when he was on earth. Not just at his crucifixion, but throughout his life, the Bible says he suffered. And when we suffer and we honor God by suffering well, there's a connection between my suffering and Jesus' suffering. And so what what this verse is saying is is I can be glad, I can be full of joy in the middle of my suffering, why? Because it makes me in some mysterious, mystical, biblical way a partner with Jesus in his suffering. And then suffering 
is a reminder to me that this place is not my home, that there's a better place called heaven, and Jesus is there right now preparing a place for each of his followers. And, and Jesus said that when our place is ready, he will come for us and he will take us to a place where there is no more suffering. So don't be surprised by the suffering. Don't be surprised by it. Instead, be full of joy. Why? Because my suffering makes me this partner with Jesus in his suffering. And my suffering is a reminder that Jesus right now is preparing a better place for me, for my loved ones who are followers of Jesus Christ, where there is no suffering. Third, third way I suffer well. Make sure you're suffering for the right reason. Make sure you're suffering for the right reason. First Peter goes on to say, if you are insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed. For the glorious spirit of God rests upon you. If you are insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed. Suffer well. Honor God in your suffering. Suffer for the right reasons. Why? Because when I suffer for honoring God, when I suffer for living a life that honors God, God blesses me in the suffering. But can I just speak very frank as your pastor? 2020 included a lot of suffering for many of us, not because we were suffering well for Jesus, but we were suffering because we were being idiots. When we act foolishly, when we act sinfully, when we choose division over unity, when we choose to look away from sin and ignore sin, and make allowance for sin. When we do not live the life that God has called us to live, and we suffer for it, do not say you're suffering for Jesus. No, 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 no. We suffer often in life because we're idiots, because we're foolish. See, if I go out and I do stupid things, and I do sinful things, and I do carnal things, and I suffer for it, I am not suffering because of Jesus. I'm suffering because of me. And so often we get into arguments. We cause divisions amongst ourselves. We separate from each other because of disagreements. We argue instead of unifying. We argue instead of listening and, and, and showing empathy. And then we want to walk away and say we're suffering for Jesus. No, we're suffering because we're being idiots. See, Jesus had so much to say about this, Bethel. How do I know if I'm aligning myself with the heart of God? How do I know if the stuff that I'm going to draw a line in a sand for and say I'm willing to suffer for this, how do I know if that represents the heart of God? Well, Jesus answers this question in a beautiful way. When he was teaching the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, Jesus gives us a list of qualities that God wants us not only to represent, God wants us to stand up for. God wants us to value. Jesus said in Matthew 5, blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the humble. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those whose hearts are pure. Blessed are those who work for peace. Blessed are those who are persecuted for doing right. See, when I align myself 
with the heart of God in each of those areas, in all of those areas. And I'm telling you something, you know this as much as I do. When we identify ourselves with those qualities that Jesus is saying, hey, you want to be blessed? You stand up for this. You want to be blessed? You live this out. You will experience trouble in this world because this world does not like those qualities and they push back. You want to suffer well? Be willing to say, I'm going to represent the heart of God in this day, in this age, in this world. And when I suffer, I'm going to suffer well. And if I'm insulted because I bear the name of Christ, I'm going to be blessed for it. So how do I suffer well? Expect suffering. Don't be surprised by suffering. Make sure I'm suffering for the right reasons. And then the last thing, four, realize that God doesn't waste suffering. There isn't one of us that at some point in 2020 was not asking God to take the suffering away. It just kept coming in waves. It just kept coming. It just kept coming. It just kept coming. And honestly, for some of us already in 2021, not much is different. In talking to some of you, in interacting with you, in praying with you, we're suffering. And, and we want God to take this away. And so often a question I get is, is Pastor Rob, why doesn't God just take the suffering away? Why is God allowing the suffering in my life or the suffering in my loved ones? It's been so long. It's been so hard. Why doesn't he just take it away? And I, I don't have the answer specifically for your situation, but what I want you to rest in is that God does not waste suffering. He doesn't waste it. James tells us that when trouble of any kind comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. See, there's that idea again. Joy in the middle of suffering. Joy in the middle of trouble. Joy because we're in Jesus. Not because I'm happy for the suffering. Not because I'm happy for the trouble. But I'm in Jesus. And I realize that Jesus is never going to waste my suffering. So, I, so I'm suffering. I'm, a, I'm in a bad place. I'm in an uncomfortable place. My loved ones are in a bad place. I can do nothing to help them. But I could have joy when I'm in Jesus. I could have joy when they're in Jesus in the middle of their suffering. Why? Because Jesus will not waste your suffering. Jesus is working in the middle of your suffering. Jesus is working through your suffering. He's working through your hardship. So much of what we, what we went through last year was hard stuff. In the summer when those marches were going on for justice and, and racial equality and all of those issues we're dealing with. And so many of you would say to me, Pastor Rob, we've been talking about this stuff for generations as a nation. When is it going to change? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when God is going to allow us as a nation to move past that. I don't know. But here's what I know. God is not wasting your suffering. He's not wasting it. So when trouble of any kind comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. He goes on, if, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So when trouble comes your way, see it as an opportunity for great joy. Why? Verse 3, because you know that when your faith is tested, when you're in a hard place, when you're dealing with brokenness or heartache or pain or suffering or illness or loss, your endurance has a chance to grow. The word for endurance is your, your, your perseverance, your steadfastness. See, what God's using all of your trouble and your pain for when he doesn't remove it from your life is he's building into you. He's, he's making you a man and a, or a woman of faith, of endurance, of steadfastness. See, we each have those people in our lives who are strong people, not because of their physical strength, 
but because of their spiritual fortitude. They're the people that we go to when we need encouragement. They're the people that we go to when we need prayer because they're the people who keep being faced with turmoil and trouble and pain and suffering, but they're the people who keep finding joy in Jesus. They're the people who keep finding peace in Jesus because those are are the people who have endured Those are the people who have walked through hard times with Jesus. And as a result, Jesus has built endurance in them. They have this fortitude about them. They have this supernatural spiritual strength. And we all have seen it. And Jesus is saying, Rob, that's what I'm building in you. And that's what I'm building in each of you at Bethel. Suffer well. Honor God in your suffering. He's not wasting your pain. He's not wasting your brokenness. So he says, when trouble comes your way, see it as an opportunity for joy. Know that your faith is being tested. And then the very next words to me are beautiful. The next verse in James says, so let it grow. Verse three, you know your faith is tested. Your endurance has a chance to grow. Your steadfastness has a chance to grow. And then the Bible says, so let it grow. Don't short circuit your suffering. Don't try to get out from under your suffering on your own. It's okay to plead with God to take it away. It's okay to plead with God to do something different. That's okay. But when you are in a place of suffering, God is growing your endurance, and he wants you to hear these words, so let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be complete, lacking nothing. That's what God is up to in your life, through your suffering. That's what God is up to in your family's life, through their suffering. That's what God is up to in Bethel's family, our church family, through our suffering. He's building our endurance as individuals. He's building our endurance as a church. And when our endurance is fully developed, God says you will be complete and you will lack nothing. You know what our world needs more of? It's followers of Jesus who suffer well, who suffer for bearing the name of Jesus, and who lean into Jesus during our suffering, where we find great joy, where we find peace, and as a result of that, God builds our endurance so that we're strong, so we're steadfast, so we're lacking nothing, so that as as others around us are suffering without Jesus, they look at us and say, what do you have that I don't have? And that is a beautiful opportunity to bring the one to Jesus, and that is what God is up to. Suffer well, Bethel. Use the email that I send out weekly to reply back to me. Let me know what I can be praying for you about. I keep those replies that you send me in my inbox. I pray for them throughout the week. Keep leaning into that and realize that God is with you. You're not alone. He's not wasting anything that you're going through, and he is up to something good. Hey, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the reminder today that you are in control even of the suffering. So often what we pray for is that you remove the suffering. Lord, my prayer today is that you open our eyes to what you're doing in the suffering. So we suffer well. We find the joy, the peace that is in you, nowhere else. And that we see that you're building our endurance, our fortitude, as we stay in a place that honors you in our suffering. Lord, your words, so let it grow. May that be true of us. Let our endurance grow. Let our faith grow. All honor to you, all glory to you, we pray in Jesus' name.